Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to Last Train Home. This is an interesting mix between real-time strategy and tactical combat, where we play as a Czechoslovakian legionary stuck on the wrong side of the Russian Civil War following World War I. If we want to get all the way back home, we have to travel all the way east through Siberia on an armored train, but it's going to be fraught with peril because... Well, the Civil War is kind of in full swing and bad things are going to happen. Really interesting idea for a game and I'm looking forward to showing it off for you. Now, this is going to be a demo that I have access to right now. I actually have an early access version to the demo. It's going to become publicly available during the Steam Next Fest in October, but for now, consider this an early preview. Let's jump into a new journey and I'll show you how this works. Now, the game opens up with a little bit of history, which is pretty interesting. So, we are playing as Czechoslovakian legionaries that were hired by the Russians to fight in World War I in support of the creation of a new Czechoslovak Republic, but of course being on the wrong side of the Russian border. When the Civil War began between the Reds and the Whites, we're now stuck. We cannot travel west to get back home. So we're now in a really weird position where we're in a foreign land, we're armed forces, we're probably not recognized by all Russians as a legitimate nation, and the only way that our provisional government can get us out of here is to travel all the way east through Siberia by armored train until we get to Vladivostok, at which point we can board a boat and begin a long, long journey home. Fun thing is, this is all actually historically based. I mean, this particular train is fictional, but this is actually a historically based story. So we are led initially by Major Gazdik, who is going to try to guide us up to Moscow and then to the I'm east through it. Siberia. For now, he gives us a little tutorial position. mission to go and try to secure some resources from a miller to the east. I'm so I've got a few different units down here. Now, one thing to note is, like I said, this is kind of a turn-based tactile game, but it's all being played in real-time strategy. So we have a scout, we have a rifleman, we have a, I think this is a machine gunner, and we have a combat Your medic, orders, all currently on my team. If I pause, I'm I can issue understand. individual commands to get behind cover and go ahead and attack Ready? enemies and stuff, just like I would with a turn-based tactical Moving game. Up. But most smoke. of the time, you're also That's playing in real-time strategy. Oh, oh look, the mill right. is being burned. Hmm, that seems like a stupid choice when winter is coming in Russia. Right, let's go ahead and gather up some food. Scavenging is a big part of this game because we are not in friendly territory. The only way our train and our legionaries are going to survive is if we gather up whatever resources we can or trade with the locals. Running to the Miller's farm, we can find out the horrible story of a family that was basically massacred because they refused to give their food supplies to the Red Army. So they just opened, fired, and killed pretty much everyone. Men, women, children, etc. Because, as you're going to find out throughout this entire demo, the Reds are kind of jerks. We really do not like the Red Army. I mean, I fully suspect we're going to find out that the White Army are awful too later on. But at least initially, it's the dang communists, man. We don't like Bolsheviks. Of course, if there are some dangerous red soldiers around over here, we need to do a little bit of scouting and make sure that they are not going to be blocking up the train. So, we'll send a scout up in this direction, who's going to have a good vantage point. And oh, look, there they are. They deserve to die! However, we have to be careful. We are a neutral force. We really do not want to get embroiled in the Civil War and pick sides. That is a great way to get into a diplomatic incident with our new Republic. So, we have to let them go, as much as they'll let us go, anyway. So, having properly introduced ourselves into the primary conflict of this storyline, all we have to do now is get back to the train and we are able to leave. When completing a mission, all of your units are going to gain some experience, because these characters do play a lot like a turn-based tactical squad. They can gain new abilities, new proficiencies, and just generally become stronger characters, so it's worth focusing on a handful of folks and making them really, really talented. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue. We can see all of our objectives we completed, including any optional objectives, etc. And we also looted some food and some cloth. Excellent. So in between your missions, you can see a little bit of conversation between some of the different characters. If they have different skills, you can have different insights, which can be fun. And again, it's mostly just done in order to kind of build out some characters and also continue to add more uh, background and foreshadowing for the story ahead. First thing we need to do, though, is get to a small town nearby, and we need to get some resources for our journey. Now our train is on the move, and we can see the long journey up ahead. If we zoom all the way further forward, we can actually watch said train if we want to. Not a lot of advantage in doing that, but it looks kind of cool. And here's the town that we need to reach. All right, let's go ahead and just uh, speed forward in time a little bit until we arrive, which should be happening right about now. And this is where we get to meet a particularly unpleasant individual, Adam Morosov, a general of the Red Army. 
This guy promises us safe passage through Siberia as long as we hand over all of our weapons. Major Gazdik is like, ah, ha, ha, and yeah. And uh, that means that General Morozov is going to be kind of peeved and probably we're going to run into him later on. Yeah, th th that's going to happen. Right, so going into the town, we need a squad. Low difficulty, potentially some good rewards across the board. Let's go ahead and create a squad of five different soldiers. Confirm, and we can deploy. Here in this town, we get to see even more of the handiwork of the Red Army as they steal recruits and provisions and kill anyone who dares to resist. As much as I would love to punish the Russians, that's really not a good option for us. However, we do need to protect the train at all costs. All right, we see that there are some Russian soldiers that are on their way. We could get behind some cover. Unfortunately, I don't think this fence is going to be very good for us. Let's try mostly to get in range over here behind this tree trunk like so. They're spreading out to attack us. This is where you really should pause the game to get into tactical view because this is where you can issue all of your individual commands, right? So I'm going to go ahead and take my machine gunner, for example, and set up a focused fire cone right over here. And if anyone dares to run through here, hopefully we'll be able to mow them down rather quickly. Otherwise, behind cover, you can see we are now targeting and trying to shoot anyone who has come through. Hopefully we'll be able to deal with them without taking too much damage myself. Your units absolutely can die. That definitely can and will happen if you are not careful. Do not think this is a real-time strategy game where you can just go running in. That is how you get people killed. Now, each of your characters do have some different abilities depending on their uh, proficiency. So, for example, we have an enemy behind some sandbags. Kind of difficult to take this guy on. What we can do is go for a quick bayonet charge with my rifleman and hopefully take him down. I'm going to go ahead and run to some cover real quick. Run over this direction. He is now ready to shoot at me. I took some damage, but that's fine. Let's go for a quick bayonet charge. Run for as fast as you can, sir! And... Storm behind their position and stab them. Perfect. Alternatives exist. You could throw a grenade. Or if you have a longer range than they do, just go ahead and take a few pot shots. But do be aware, you have a finite amount of ammo, so uh, you need to conserve that as much as you can. You also can sneak up on enemies if you activate silent mode, so it's kind of like a stealth mode here. Don't expect you can use this for all situations. There are many occasions where you're gonna have to go loud, but if you can use a silent kill, to take out a few small enemies and make the next fight a little bit easier, it's often worth doing that. So in this case, I'm actually using silent mode to sneak up on these guys, set up my machine gun, and then when I'm ready to go ahead and open fire, let's turn this off, and everyone give them hell before they have a chance to get to cover, ideally. There we go. Perfect ambush. The game also does feature some destructible objects, such as these explosives by these artillery shells. All I gotta do, toss a quick grenade over here. We'll wait for this cooldown to go down. Go boom! Bye-bye, Red Soldiers. Bye-bye. Some of your units, like a scout, for example, can use binoculars to recon areas of the map. So up over here, for example, let's do a quick little check. Oh, Lord, there are a lot of Red Soldiers over here. Hooray. Tell you what, this bridge is a perfect spot for an ambush. Let's go ahead and set up our machine gun over here so that if they attack us, they're going to get mowed down with no cover. Yep, see, here they come. All right, so this could be a little bit of a problem under other circumstances, but it kind of goes to show that if they do not have cover, this is extremely dangerous, right? Again, don't just run in. You'll get your units killed if they can't find cover. Now, these guys don't want to attack me because they now... Oh, wow, the commanding officer just shot the guy who retreated. I didn't even notice that the first time I played this. Okay. Anyway, these guys don't want to come and attack us now that they know we have the bridge. What we'll do is call an artillery strike from our armored train, right on this guy's face. Hey, look at that big honking cannon. Kaboom! And... Wait for the fireworks, wait for the fireworks. Oh, there we go! Boom, boom, bada, bada, boom. And these explosive barrels can take out some of the remainders. And after gathering up a few supplies, that's all we need for this mission. Let's go ahead and exit the area. So you can see here that our units did gain some experience, which means that they'll get a little bit more proficient over time. One guy did take some uh, damage, so he's going to be wounded. We need to heal him on the train. And people also do have a stamina bar, which can gradually run out as well. At the end of missions, you can also assign medals and get some people promoted. So I'll go ahead and promote, let's say, you, you, and um, 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 you. There we go. Boom. All right. We also scavenged a lot of equipment by killing a lot of red soldiers. This is worth not only money we can trade later on, but of course we could use this equipment ourselves. 
So, let's go ahead and depart this village. We will start moving with our train and heading toward Moscow, which is way up over here. Now, while we're doing that, let's take a look at a few things. So, if we go to the hospital car down over here, for example, we can see that we do have a couple of different doctors, one on the day shift, one on the night shift. If anyone's wounded, we should go ahead and assign them to the recovery ward. So, you, sir, are going to go over here and get yourself rested up and healed. Okay, cool. There's also some infantry cars where our people are going to live. We have a storage car with all of our resources, an artillery car where we called in those beautiful artillery strikes, and our locomotive towing bull. Notice that most of these uh, cars do have jobs and therefore some people that need to work them. These are all individual members of your crew. You are welcome to swap these people around as you see fit. If we want to click on this soldier overview, for example, we can see all of our individual soldiers, including the people who work the train and don't go on military squads. We can control their rations. We can see what the temperature is looking like. What's their schedule? Do they have enough uh, living space? And also, what kind of traits do they have? And this is going to be interesting because I haven't gotten this far in the demo yet to see if it's a problem, but everyone does have their own ideological uh, sympathies that probably will play a role later on. We've got monarchists, we've got communists, we've got religious zealots, nationalists, it probably will affect some of the uh, morale as we make interactions with the red and the white armies respectively. Not to mention your individual characters also have their own traits, such as being careless, or avaricious, or faint-hearted, or strong-willed, etc, etc. And then everyone also has their own different attributes, shown down over here. These attributes can make you better at your current job, or depending on what roles you want for your people, you can get some different jobs. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, if we go to Antonin over here, who I just promoted recently, we can give him some additional skills. We can also try to unlock some different proficiencies. So if I were to go to this guy, for example, and say, hey, there's a new role available. Let's say I wanted to make this guy into, um, how about a, um, how about a rifleman? No, we already got that. What about, what's something I don't have? How about a doctor? There we go. Get him up to six intelligence, and we'd be able to open up a new job for this character. Do you need additional roles for your characters? No, probably not, because they can level up in their existing job, and that is also important for you, but it is sometimes helpful to have some backup options in case, let's say, my Grenadier were to die. I wouldn't mind having another one available, so we could increase this guy's intelligence, for example, and that would open up a new potential job. As they gain additional roles or increase the skills in their respective roles, you can see they also gain some new skills, which could be good. So, for example, we can make this rifleman not only be quick with his feet, but also take silent steps. There we go, another passive ability. Anyway, let's continue traveling through Russia. Oh, never mind, we actually have to go shopping with some of the locals. We can send a squad to a local village called Kaluga. So, in this case, let's go ahead and plan on stopping the train right about now. There we go. And then we will go ahead and take this existing squad, and we will send them over here to Kaluga. Of course, it's worth taking around an av avaricious character if you can, because, uh, well, you like to have better trade deals. It does cost some stamina every time you leave the train to go on a trip like this, though, so you're not going to be able to do a ton of these without having a chance to rest on the train. So now we have to wait for our squad to travel all this way, like so. Then we get to interact a little bit more with the locals, find out that the Reds are exactly as evil as I thought they were. And then trade with the merchants, and we can try to buy some stuff we're going to need. Mainly cloth, herbs, if they had any food, I'd be highly tempted to pick that up, but they do not. So, alright, let's try buying, let's say, 80 cloth or something. Maybe we buy a few herbs, how about 60 or so of those to make medicine. And we can trade a few things that I've got right now. Now, it says that we have money up here. I'm actually not sure how you access money, or if this is just the total value of what I currently own. But for example, if I wanted to hand off like a couple of landmines, seems very irresponsible to trade to a civilian, but I mean, whatever. If we wanted to trade off at least a few of these things, yeah, we could buy some supplies. Okay, there we go. We have bought a few pieces of equipment. Let's go ahead and recall the squad, again at the cost of some of that stamina, and start up the train and resume our journey. Now, you may notice in the top right that there are a few different resources we need to worry about, including the things we just traded for, or some we'll have to scavenge. Fuel is a big one. You'll consume this rather rapidly as you continue to fuel the train, run out of fuel, and you are dead in the water. We also need to worry about food. There's our money. We have wood, metal, cloth, herbs, and gunpowder. All of this can be used for crafting or repairs or upgrading your train in some way. Oh, okay, case in point, uh, my train just decided to do a little bit of a breakdown. 
Well, that's annoying, but okay. We can go ahead and do some forging while we wait to repair the train. So this is coming to a stop. Let's go to our locomotive tool, uh, towing bull over here. We've got enough workers to go ahead and work on this. I need to resolve the engine malfunction. This is going to cost me some of my metal, and it's going to take a couple of hours to work. But as long as we have some workers available, which we should... They'll start working on this right away. All right, let's go ahead and pause for a second while they do that, and let's see if we can send some squads out to, let's say, the forest and start forging some extra food. Some of your characters have special abilities, like, for example, being a talented hunter, which is going to increase the amount of food that they are able to get. Or herbalists can get you some extra herbs. Train is repaired, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it a little bit closer and then bring that to a quick stop so our people don't have to travel very far from the lake where we find some more food and, of course, a bit more combat XP. Excellent, let's recall. So on to Moscow we go, where it looks like it's burning a little bit. That's concerning, but we're trying to meet a Captain Lenger who is supposed to be negotiating our trip through Siberia. Hopefully he has some good news for us. Or maybe not, because it looks like the Reds have decided to ram us with their own train. And General Morozov is back and he murders Major Graznik. Why are the Bolsheviks so mean? Great, so now we're stuck in Moscow uh, with position. no particular friends in the middle of a civil war. Oh, goody, goody gumdrop. It's fine though, I'll just go ahead and shoot all of these Bolsheviks and that'll make me feel better. Best thing to do, honestly, use the omniscience of your scout with the magical binoculars and keep scouting around trying to find some enemies. So for example, I see this guy patrolling on his own. If I wanted to do a stealth kill, that's probably an option. Oh look, resources to scavenge. Always be doing that too, by the way. Look for things you can grab. Oh, one of my units took a lot of damage. Okay, we'll pull him back and let's go ahead and get this guy healed. You can stabilize your downed guys, um, but they'll really need some serious treatment when they get back to the train. Looks like we can see a bunch of enemies over here next to an alarm bell. If we get their attention, they'll ring that and that will bring a lot of people down on me. Okay, huge enemy position over this direction. Uh, cannot use an artillery strike because my train has kind of been destroyed. That's a bit of a problem. I don't want to go down this way, so let's just go ahead and duck down these alleyways. Ah, there's Captain Linger. Hello. Captain Linger fortunately knows of another armored train in Moscow that we could steal from the Red Army. Oh, I see some enemies are patrolling down this direction. We need to move quick, but I also need to stay silent so I don't draw any undesirable attention. And there we go. All right, so we managed to get around that. There's not a lot of advantage in me um, attacking folks if I can avoid it. Um, I do, however, want to continue scavenging, so we'll try grabbing that. We can probably deal with these, but remember, it doesn't take many bullets to kill any of your men. And I, I, I really don't want to take any stupid risks. We're already down pretty low on manpower right now. Again, always use your scouts on missions with the binoculars. Scout the areas, see if you can find any threats before they get on you. Crap, case in point, uh, some enemies are already right here. Um, all right, you can try to get into a position to set up your machine gun real quick before this draws a lot of attention. The rest of you run over here, get behind some cover while you can. There we go. These fools are standing out in the open, which means my machine gun should be able to take them down pretty easily. At least I would have thought so. Looks like this guy is hiding right behind that yes. line of sight. Finding Move cover. over to new cover over here. Take a sh- oh, never mind. We're good. Okay, so there's the train. Let's see if we can do a double stabby stab here. I'm going to go ahead and pause so I can queue orders. You go here, you go here. And let's see if we can kill these guys before they become a problem. Silent kill, silent kill. Hey! Oh, seems like we still drew a little bit of undesirable attention. Um, please shoot this guy while he's out in the open. Everybody, take a second. Shoot this guy while he's running around. Um, there we go. Okay, so we can capture the train, but I also want to gather up as many supplies as I yes, can. And I've got position. someone currently set up on a heavy Gatling gun that I discovered over here, which is going to be very useful when the enemy does decide to come on and force. Oh yeah, lots of enemies starting to come through. Gatling gun does some pretty good damage. Um, we are behind some sandbags, which definitely does help. The train is ours, ready to go. Hold on. Let's go to the Gatling gun. Let's go ahead and disembark. We might get shot at, which is a little bit risky, but run, 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 run! And now we are ready to leave. Okay, all set. Once again, we need to assign some medals. Well, you did really well. We'll go ahead and medal you, I guess. And we'll medal, I don't know, how about you did really well? Uh, I kind of think I want to just go ahead and give out some purple hearts. Gain a lot of experience, looted quite a few resources, which is going to be very, very helpful, and a bit of equipment, which we can again trade or use. Now, interestingly enough, despite the fact that we are a relatively young and inexperienced captain, the Czechoslovak Provisional Government has assigned us as the new major for this train, which is going to mean that Captain Langer is our advisor and adjutant. 
We also get a replenishment of soldiers from Captain Langer's unit, since we kind of lost all the folks on our train. And now we get a jump to some cutscenes where we learn a little bit more about Captain Langer and some of the backstory as to what's going on. There's also an interesting mix of some live action uh, acting going on in this as well, which is a pretty cool touch. So, situation reports. We kind of lost, um, well, all of our good stuff. There's no hospital car, so when people get injured, that's going to be a problem. No artillery car, so no more artillery strikes. We have almost no food, and we have very little fuel. Uh-huh. All right. Well, we have to keep traveling east somehow. How we're gonna do that while having lost almost everything? Great question. Now this is where the demo shows the true scale of this game. So we have our train here, and if I zoom out, we have to get to Penza. Look at all the points of interest we can follow along the tracks as we get over here to Penza. There's kind of a lot to do. Not to mention we have to worry about our soldiers in a lot of other ways. We have 13 depressed soldiers, we have seven tired soldiers, one who's been injured with no way of healing, and so on. Yeah, 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 this is going to be challenging, because now we have to properly manage our squad. So, this is where we have to decide how we want to start spending some resources in order to boost up our car in some way. We can go to some of these individual cars and try to plan out some repairs and some upgrades and stuff like that. Not that there's much we can do here at this exact moment, but you can see, for example, if we wanted to spend some materials and assign some people to work here when the train is not moving, we could reinforce the chassis for an infantry car. We're also going to need such things as insulation and stuff. That heating is going to be very, very important, but does consume fuel, right? But who wants to travel through Siberia without heating? You get the idea? So there's a lot of things we can do here, and this is where the game starts to remind me a little bit of something like Frostpunk, believe it or not, where we have to really be uh, selective with our resource usage in order to maximize our chance of survival. So for example, I think it might make sense to go ahead and stop the train, at least briefly. We will take a look at my squadron. I need to change who is currently in this, especially the people who are currently too injured to be a part of this. In fact, I'll let everyone else rest for a little bit. Let's just go ahead and take some fresh blood. And maybe we can go and do some shopping or something. And in the meantime, let's go back to our car and consider how we are going to improve this. If I increase the uh, size of these cars with more beds, we could probably get rid of one of these, consolidate a little bit, and then focus all my upgrades in one or two infantry cars instead of three. But do I have the resources to spare for something like this? That's a good question. I think we gotta try. So let's go ahead and assign there, and if I can get a couple of spare workers who are currently not doing anything... There we go, so this will start making some progress as long as we stay still, but it's a good opportunity for that. What about the storage car? We can increase... Well, we can reduce the chance of a rat infestation, probably eating up my food. That could be important. Shelves increase our storage capacity by 2,000 is probably not relevant right now. What other options we got? A reinforced chassis so they have more hit points. Sturdy materials so there's less chance of a malfunction. Yep, 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 yep. Lots of stuff we could do here. Now let's get over to Molino over here. We can try talking to the merchant. I don't have an avaricious character, but we could buy some food. And Lord knows, I could really use some food. That said, none of this is actually the food I was expecting. These are all consumables. You can still use it like food. It fully feeds a character, removing the hungry and the starving status. So I guess I do still want some of this, but it's kind of expensive. Well, weirdly enough, the cheapest food I can buy is caviar. So I'm going to buy a couple of caviar and some salad. Oh, and I just figured out how you actually use money, by the way. I'm sorry, this isn't a resource you click to add in over here. If there's a deficit and you have enough money, it transfers money over. Oh, okay, that's very sensible. There we go. All right, so at least over here we have now increased the number of living spaces a bit. So I can transfer some of these guys over if I want to. And now we've transferred over everybody from car three. So this is empty. So I no longer need to worry about doing any upgrades here. Let's go ahead and also start working on getting myself some insulation in both of these cars. Now we return with a little bit of food, excellent, and we probably go ahead and travel with the same squad over here. They're a little bit tired, but they'll be all right. Their morale's still pretty low. Take down a few good trees, get some lumber. All right, good. The train is on its way, so we need to definitely recall these guys now that they are exhausted. Stop the train so they don't have to go chasing after us. That's a good way to leave your people behind. And we'll give them a chance to rest up while we move over here to Colum Columna, however you say that. There we go. And we are now in this train station. Let's go ahead and take a look. There is a doctor we can go to who can treat our people for a price. 
Frankly, I could really use that. Um, 600 gold to heal both of these folks. It's worth it, but ooh, ouch, that's expensive. And at this merchant, I could try buying a little bit of metal. It's not worth a lot, unfortunately. First aid kit, some gunpowder. I don't think I really have any value in gunpowder right now. Could sell off any excess amount of ammo. I suppose that is an option. There we go. That's just going to have to be good enough, and that's kind of all I can do. Let's go ahead and depart and move on. At least until I get to these next locations, at which point we stop the train and we go over here, we select our squad, they're all still exhausted. Right, I need some more people. We find some sort of a church over this direction, they're gonna have a bit of a theological discussion, and because someone's religious, he of course wants to jump in there and say, hey, you know, there's kind of a difference between killing in general and killing in warfare, right? What is the difference? The right to defend yourself, but it depends on the religious teachings you're brought up with. Oh cool, we're having a philosophical debate here, that's great. Let's, uh, let's visit the church. Is there anything cool here? A uh, priest unlocks the door, welcomes us. I'm Father Glebov. Do you seek refuge? We're Czechoslovak. Ah, the Legion. Welcome, welcome. Don't you side with the White Army? No. No, the Bolsheviks want you to think that. You know what the funny thing being? Um, considering what the Red Army and the Communists end up doing? They probably should have. They give us a gift. Aw, we like the Russian Orthodox Church. Thank you. What do I want? Food? Honestly, at this point, food. I'll take the food. Thank you. And off we go once again. Yeah, all right. So our train obviously has a long way to go. Um, I assume at some point we will be able to add some additional cars to the train. That includes the hospital car, the artillery car. And you already saw that there are a lot of different upgrades that we can prioritize in this game, and we absolutely should do that at some point. Let's just go ahead and get up here to Ryazan, and then I'll stop. Uh, it does show you, by the way, a preview for how much of your fuel it's going to take to reach a destination, which is good to know. Received a report from our soldiers. The Reds have a large camp where they're training up new soldiers. Oh, good. Okay. And there are very few people left to work the fields because of the war. Well, hmm. If there's a lot of food just sitting around waiting for people to take it, maybe we should send a squad over here and see if we can either get a little vengeance on the Reds or maybe steal some food. If only, if only I was swimming in so many extra materials that I could just uh, sell here. That would be fantastic. Uh, it does look like there are a lot of different types of guns in this game. I don't know if there are different, uh, like, levels of rarity for different kinds of weapons in the same category. Probably not, really, if this is historically accurate. So, uh, so uh, yeah, make sure you have enough of a particular type of gun to make sure that you're able to fulfill whatever your role is for a chosen character. And we gather up a few more supplies. All right, well, I think this is probably a good place for us to pause and kind of end this video. So you get an idea how this game is going to work, and you can kind of see where it's going to go in the future as far as how we're going to continue upgrading, how we can build out our squad, level them up, right, get them properly equipped. Dealing with a Red Army camp over here could be great, though you can see it's got a lot of difficulty to it, so that could be fun. I don't know. This game actually, I think, has a lot of really cool potential. This is, like, a fascinating idea for a game. I don't expect there's going to be a lot of replayability. Once you play it once, you're probably just kind of done. But if you can survive all the way through, it seems like the narrative is pretty exciting. I didn't even know about the Czechoslovak legions uh, during the uh, f aftermath of World War I, so this is being historically accurate is really cool. And I think that the management aspect from the resources and the scavenging and the exploration is great. And while it is a little bit weird having a real-time strategy tactical game, as long as you make prolific use of the pause button and you're using abilities to scout and plan out your attacks carefully, it's pretty engaging and fun as well. So I think this game is definitely something to keep an eye on as it continues to develop. And remember, there's a long way to go for my train just before we get to Penn at which point I think the demo probably concludes. So when the Steam Next Fest does come available in October, go ahead and look this game up, give it a go for yourself, maybe play all the way to Penza and decide if this is something that's going to be for you. In the meantime, I'll include a link in the description down below. Thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.